There are several biological and scientific reasons why a creature the size of Godzilla could never exist in real life. Well, we do know that Godzilla's unique titan biology allows him to overcome such limiting factors since he is a radioactive immortal kaiju. But here we will only discuss real science and why a creature, not necessarily Godzilla himself but let's say another like him, would be impossible in real life. The first one of course is the square cube law. As an animal grows larger, its volume and weight increase at a faster rate than its surface area in comparison. This means that an animal the size of Godzilla would need proportionally thicker and stronger bones, muscles and other tissues to support its weight and move its massive body. It's highly unlikely that any biological material could ever evolve to be strong enough to support such a creature of that size, unless the bones are made of titanium or carbon fiber. And even with such materials, constant movement will induce cracks and fractures that will eventually cause the creature to crumble on its own weight. The second limiting factor is energy requirement. A creature the size of Godzilla would require an enormous amount of food and energy to sustain itself. Even if such a creature had access to almost unlimited food supply, it is highly unlikely that it could consume enough to support its massive body and metabolism. For example, an adult elephant can consume about 300 pounds of food per day to meet its energy needs. Similarly, some dinosaurs were estimated to consume up to 500 pounds of food per day. Now for an animal the size of Godzilla, there would be no amount of food source in any specific niche or ecosystem coupled with the energy output to find such food source. The cause versus benefit analysis would deem this highly unsustainable in the long run. Number 3. Respiration As animals get larger, it becomes more difficult for oxygen to diffuse through their tissues which can limit their ability to extract oxygen from the air or water. A creature the size of Godzilla will require an incredibly efficient respiratory system to sustain its massive body, which is highly unlikely to evolve naturally. Respiration can certainly be a limiting factor as an animal would require a large amount of oxygen to fuel its metabolism. Large animals like whales have adaptations to increase their respiratory efficiency, such as larger lungs or specialized air sacs. However, it is unclear whether a creature the size of Godzilla, which is multiple times or hundreds of times bigger than a whale, would have similar adaptations or a unique respiratory system. In any case, respiration, which is essentially not just breathing in and out, but the entire purpose of breaking down of food into energy for metabolism, would in turn generate another limiting factor. Now we come to the fourth limiting factor, which is heat dissipation. Large animals generate more heat than small animals, and it becomes increasingly difficult to dissipate that heat as the animal's size increases. As animals become larger, their surface area to volume ratio decreases, which means that they have a smaller surface area relative to their volume. This can make it more difficult for them to dissipate their excess heat, which can lead to overheating and other physiological problems for their cells, tissues and organs. A creature the size of the G-Man would need a highly efficient cooling system to avoid overheating. Having dorsal plates might help, but we're talking real science here. Fictionally, Godzilla is already an overheated radioactive monster titan. Uh, let's say there are some physiological traits that would minimize this heat dissipation. But what would the excess heat inside the body do to the next limiting factor? And this is the nervous system. It is highly likely that the nervous system of a creature the size of Godzilla would work more slowly than that of small animals. This is because nerve impulses travel through neurons at a finite speed which is determined by the properties of the nerve fibers and the concentrations of the ions in the extracellular fluid. As an animal gets larger, the distance between its brain and its extremities increases and the length of its nerves grow accordingly. This means that it takes longer for nerve impulses to travel from the brain to the body and back again, which can result in slower reflexes and reaction times, and even movement. There are also limits to the size of nerve fibers, beyond which it becomes more difficult or even impossible for impulses to travel efficiently. And the excess heat would just mess it all up, burn the fibers and just mess up the ion exchange. Number 6. The Evolutionary Limitations So it's worth noting that there are evolutionary constraints that limit the size of animals. For example, there are physical limits to how large an animal's heart can be and still pump blood effectively throughout the body. 
as well as limits to how fast an animal can move its limbs relative to its size. These and other constraints make it highly unlikely that a creature the size of Godzilla would ever evolve naturally. The evolutionary factor is the most interesting part here, since animals usually evolve after a long succession of inheritable viable point mutations passed down through their children's or offsprings and these point mutations are located in the genes that allow certain phenotypes or phenotypic traits to enhance and thereby allow the offspring or the creature specimen to succeed in procreation and passing down the helpful characteristics to their offsprings for survival and dominance. There have been many large animals that went extinct due to their size like the Spinosaurus and the Brachiosaurus and why it is actually a constraint for them for their size to find food and mates. So evolving larger in the grand scheme of things isn't really an evolutionary success story. And lastly, number 7, Reproduction. As animals get larger, it becomes more difficult for them to find suitable mates and reproduce. A creature the size of Godzilla would need a large population to avoid genetic inbreeding, which would be difficult to sustain in a limited habitat like the Earth. Even if inbreeding wasn't an issue and there is a chance that a hybrid vigor or inbred offsprings that are actually tougher were possible, their size and ability to find enough food to grow into adulthood and become sexually mature themselves would be a very tiny success rate, which would mean that they would have to forage for food all around the world and what if they died due to starvation and or sickness before another specimen of the other sex, the opposite sex, meets them for procreation. So yeah, that's a bummer. So taken together, all these factors make it highly unlikely or even possible that a creature the size of Godzilla could ever exist in reality. While it is certainly possible to imagine such a creature in the context of science fiction or fantasy, it's important to remember that the real world biology and physics place significant constraints on what is possible for life forms. So I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. Do hit the like button for support and subscribe, but most of all, smash the bell icon for regular updates on new videos right here on this channel. Till the next one, take care fam.